Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dr. Marizela Carvalho, Junior Resident, Department of Radio Diagnosis, Goa Medical College. Today, I will be presenting a case report of a multifocal primary glioblastoma in a young patient. Introduction. Glioblastoma, also known as glioblastoma multiform, is the most common and aggressive primary tumor that affects 15% of adults, usually seen in older age groups, and they mostly present as solitary lesions. Following is a case report of a multifocal glioblastoma in a young patient with a misleading clinical presentation that resembled an infective process rather than neoplasia. Case report. A 28-year-old female patient was referred to the emergency department with multiple episodes of seizures and loss of consciousness since one day. Patient also had history of headache and few episodes of fever over the past 15 days. There were no other constitutional symptoms and patient had no other past medical history. On examination, patient had a low GCS with intermittent decorticate posturing. Patient also had a left-sided facial palsy. On this examination revealed bilateral disc edema. Blood examinations showed a mildly raised leukocyte count with moderate anemia. Non-contrast CT scan of the brain revealed few hypodense lesions in the right temporal and basi temporal region. There was associated white matter edema and mass effect on the adjacent structures. On subsequently performed MRI, multiple thick-walled, well-defined lesions were noted in the right temporoparietal region. These lesions showed central hypo-intense signal on T1-weighted images with hyper-intense rim, hyper-intense signal on T2-weighted images with a hypo-intense rim, and hypo-intense on flare with a hyper-intense rim. Some of these lesions showed peripheral areas of restricted diffusivity on diffusion-weighted images appearing low on ADC. Foci of blooming were seen on susceptibility-weighted images. On injection of gadolinium contrast, thick irregular peripheral rim enhancement is seen of these lesions on T1-weighted images. Extensive vasogenic edema is noted in the right parieto-temporo occipital region. White matter edema is also seen to involve the entire splenium as well as the distal body of the corpus callosum across the midline. Mass effect was noted on the adjacent lateral ventricle with a midline shift and subpulsine herniation. Descending transtentorial herniation with herniation of the right uncus and parahippocampal gyrus was seen with effacement of the ambient cistern and mass effect on the midbrain. Cerebral edema and early onset hydrocephalus was noted. Multivoxel MR spectroscopy of the ring enhancing lesions was done. Following image shows a choline peak and reduced NA in the quiet matter adjacent to the ring enhancing lesion, suggestive of a infiltration. The differential diagnosis of the ring enhancing lesions in this case included neoplastic etiology and infective etiology. However, the extensive white matter edema extending across the corpus callosum as well as the MR spectroscopy findings favored a diagnosis of GBM. Patient was taken to the emergency OT. On table findings were suggestive of cerebritis with multiple abscesses. Pus culture sensitivity was sent and biopsy samples were taken. Post surgery, the patient significantly improved and regained full consciousness. Patient was then started on empirical treatment of AKT and antifungals based on the clinical profile and on table findings. An initial histopathology report revealed acute and chronic inflammation with granulation tissue and treatment was continued. However, a second report from a higher institute was suggestive of astrocytoma NOS, WHO grade 4, that is glioblastoma, and patient was planned for further management of the same. Discussion Glioblastomas belong to the group of astrocytomas, which are primary malignant tumors of the brain. According to WHO grading system, these are categorized as WHO grade 4 neoplasms. These can be primary, which arise de novo, also called IDH wild type, or they can be secondary, which arise from a low-grade astrocytoma, also called as IDH mutant astrocytomas. Clinical presentation, tumor presents in adults with a peak age group of 55 to 85 years with no gender predilection. Symptoms in presentation include focal neurological deficits and seizures. Symptoms of raised intracranial pressure may also be present. Pathology. Primary glioblastomas can be located anywhere in the cerebral hemispheres involving the subcortical and periventricular white matter. Secondary glioblastomas have a predilection for frontal lobes. These lesions spread across white matter tracts like corpus callosum and corticospinal tracts. 
Symmetric involvement of the corpus callosum is known as a butterfly glioma. 20% are multifocal with the lesions being connected by white matter edema. However, true synchronous or multicentric tumors are rare. The tumors appear as a reddish gray tumor ring with a central necrotic core. Microscopy shows necrosis and microvascular proliferation which are the hallmarks of GBM. Tumor cells include pleomorphic fibrillary astrocytes, gemistocytes and multinucleated giant cells. Necrosis and hemorrhage are usually absent in secondary gliomas. Imaging features. On CT, hypodense central mass with ISO or hypodense rim with heterogeneous rim enhancement is seen. MRI, T1 shows a poorly marginated mass with mixed signal intensity. T2 and flare sequences, heterogeneous hyperintensity and extensive vasogenic edema. On post contrast, irregular ring enhancement with non enhancing necrotic centers. Blooming is seen on susceptibility weighted images. However, most GBMs do not show restricted diffusivity. On MRS, an elevated choline and reduced NAA is seen. Metabolite ratios exhibit relationship to the tumor grade. A lipid lactate peak resonating at 1.33 parts per million is seen in the necrotic areas. Angiography, prominent capillary phase tumor blush, and large irregular appearing vessels and pooling of contrast are the features. Spread of tumor occurs along compact white matter tracts, CSF dissemination, epidermal and subepidermal spread, skull dura metastasis, extra CNS metastasis. Treatment includes tumor debulking followed by post-operative adjuvant radiotherapy and chemotherapy. Timely follow-up imaging plays an important role in management. GBM mimics metastasis, multiple well-defined round ovoid lesions located peripherally at gray-white matter junction. MRS also shows a high choline and reduced anastyle aspartate of the lesions. However, no spectroscopic abnormalities are seen in the adjacent brain tissue. Abscess have thinner regular rims and show restriction on DWI. MRS shows succinate and cytosolic amino acids. Anaplastic astrocytoma and anaplastic oligodendroglioma are usually difficult to differentiate, requiring biopsy for diagnosis. Primary CNS lymphoma often deep-seated with the predilection for the periventricular white matter and corpus callosum, but are rarely necrotic in the absence of HIV-AIDS. Tumefactive demyelination is located in subcortical white matter. Peripheral rim enhancement with the horseshoe pattern, open segment facing the sulcus and cortex is seen. Conclusion Glyblastoma is diagnosed by clinical and imaging findings and confirmed by histopathology. Being an aggressive tumor, it has a poor prognosis, hence early diagnosis and aggressive treatment is essential for a better outcome. In the above case, the clinical profile and on-table findings were suggestive of an infective etiology. However, the imaging characteristics pointed in the direction of a neoplastic etiology. It is important to keep in mind the atypical clinical and imaging presentations of GBM in order to avoid delays in diagnosis and treatment. These are my references. Thank you.